so we have to discuss about myanmar you know previously myanmar was known as burma uh, it gained freedom from colonial rule in 1948 and became a democracy but the democratic rule ended in 1962 with a military coup in 1990 elections were held for the first time almost after almost 30 years the national league of democracy led by wang san suu kyi pronounced suu kyi won the election but the military leaders of myanmar refused to step down and did not recognize the election uh, results instead the military put the elected pro democracy leaders including suu kyi under house arrest so she was made uh, 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 put under house arrest political activists activists accused um, accused of even the j uh, even the most trivial offenses have been jailed anyone caught publicly airing views or issuing statements critical of the regime can be sentenced up to 20 years you know in prison so you can see the punishment Uh, due to the coercive policies of the military rule government in Myanmar, about six to ten lakh people in that country have been uprooted from their homes, have taken shelter somewhere else. You know they've uh, migrated to other countries, nearby countries, or maybe other whichever country they like. Despite uh, being uh, under house arrest, Suu Kyi continued to campaign for democracy. According to her, the quest for democracy in Burma is the struggle of the people to live whole. meaningful lives as free and equal members of the world community her struggle has won international recognition she has also been you know awarded nobel peace prize yet the people in myanmar are still struggling to establish democratic uh, government in their country so even after you know first uh, uh, being a colonial uh, under colonial rule and then uh, getting democracy and then having a military group and then again having a fighting for a democracy still their uh, myanmar as a country is very unstable why should the policy of the government of india towards the military uh, be should be the policy of government of india and how should we as a nation because we are then myanmar's neighbor how should we you know see it and uh, have a policy towards myanmar so it's an activity you know locate a myanmar you have to look at myanmar on the atlas which indian states borders this country so you have to also tell that uh, which uh, country borders myanmar write a short a uh, short uh, you know you can write a short um, essay on the life of um, uh, the political leader uh, wang san and you got uh, this thing also uh, nobel peace prize you can collect new newspapers of the struggle on the democracy in nepal sorry in myanmar so this is the political map okay so myanmar is here it's here this is myanmar this country can you see and this is bangladesh this is other country so which country uh, sorry which indian states do uh, myanmar is connected it's connected to mizoram yes manipur yes nagaland yes Assam no, and Arunachal Pradesh yes. So one, two, three, sorry, four. So it's connected to four Indian states, and here we've already named them under the uh, sorry Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, Nagaland, and Mizoram. Okay. So yeah, let's see now. Move forward. Um. what is democracy at the global level so here is a discussion going on between students or you know after reading about the various phases of expansion of democracy uh, a teacher uh, a teacher mr singh asked the students to summarize what they have learned this is how the conversation took place so let's see farida we've learned that democracy has been expanding to more and more regions and countries all over the world rajesh yes we believe in a world uh, we live in a better world than before it seems we are moving towards a world democracy shushmita world democracy how can you say that i saw a television program that showed how the americans invaded iraq without any justification the people of iraq were not consulted and he said how can you call that it is going towards a world democracy farida i'm not talking about the relationship between different countries i am only saying that more and more countries are becoming democratic rajesh but what is the difference between the two 
uh, if more and more countries become democracy isn't it obvious that the world also becomes more democratic after all the iraq war was all about was taking democracy to that uh, country sushmita no it is not obvious to me Singh sir, I think we are talking about two very different things here. Farida spoke about the establishment of democratic governments within different countries in the whole world. Sushmita and Rajesh have differences over something else. Their difference is over the relationship between among different countries. It is quite possible, Rajesh, that the rulers of a country who are democratically elected by people may want to dominate. over other countries sushmita yes sir this is exactly what happened in the case uh, uh, in the war of iraq so they are discussing that how one powerful nation you know or an, any any other country they tries to uh, rule in other countries surender i am confused how can we talk about democracy at the global level is there any uh, world government who is the president of the world is there uh, is there no government how can we say uh, how uh, can it be a democratic and no non non democratic so there is a discussion going on between the students and they are talking that is our world uh, going towards more and more countries being democratic or not so let's talk about the international organization let us respond to the questions that came up in the conversation that's an increase in the number of democratic countries all over the world automatically lead to democratic uh, relations among uh, countries before we do that let us think about the point raised by surinder there is a government of india a government of the united states of america and so on but there is no government of the world no government can pass any law that will apply to all the people of the world so you are saying that is there an a government that rules the world and uh, they are talking about that so if there is no such government if there are no rulers and uh, rulers and ruled how can we apply two features of democracy or uh, these two features you would recall were applied that the rulers would a uh, uh, ruler should be elected by the people and that should have basic political uh, freedom so here we are talking about if there are no um, you know uh, government at the world level how can we say whether they are democratic or not whether uh, they have some basic political rights or not so that's the question that is um going on here should there be a world democrat uh, world government if yes who should elect it and what should the powers be of it so we are discussing that should there be a world government that should uh, run the world so this is a picture of un Uh, the cartoon was established in mexico in 2005 and was titled international games which games is the cartoon is talking about here what does the ball symbolize who are the players so you can see united nations you can see uh, flags of different countries this is of um, uh, united states and here they are not uh, recognizable but yeah and here are two people you can see one is with a gun and here he also looks like he has some weapons and everything and this is uh, the earth so they are playing soccer with it so he they are saying that does earth belong to you or me so they are playing soccer you know who is to score should the permanent members okay so should the permanent members of the un be given uh, of the united nations be given the power of veto so we'll see that while surinder is right in one sense we cannot say that the question of democracy does not arise here there is no single world government but there are many institutions in the world that perform partially the functions of such a government there are no governments you know world government but there is an institution which for you know functions that partially does the function of a government these organizations cannot command countries uh, and citizens in a way that uh, in a way that a government can but they can make rules that put limits on what governments can do consider these points so these are not actually government but they can put limits and uh, you know because that's how the world will run if everybody is everybody has their own territory and all their own regulations and etc but how is that going to work as a uh oh, in a in a, in our um, globe you know if we see it on a planet so who makes laws and rules to govern the seas and not to fall within the boundaries of any one country who, who or who takes steps to control environmental degradation that the, the that threatens all the countries together the united nations have evolved many conventions on these questions that are now binding on most of the countries the united nations is a global association of nations you know it's a global united nations is united matlab coming together nations countries nations means countries there is a global association of the world to help cooperations in international law security economic development and social equity 
United uh, Nation, uh, United Nations Secretary General is its chief administrative officer. So we are now we have an answer that who runs the world government. We have an answer. It is United Nations, which is coming together of the nations together, and it is binding on most of uh, you know all the uh, nations uh, who are under it. Uh, you know to help cooperation in international law, security, economic development, social uh, equity, matlab distribution of resources, and etc. What happens when a country attacks another? country in an unjust manner like we've seen that a usa invaded iraq united secretary council and organ of the united nations is responsible for maintaining peace and security so united nations council he they're responsible for maintaining uh, peace and security among countries it can put together an international army and take actions against the wrongdoers so they can you know put together an army or uh, you know uh, they can actually you know put a ban and other things also actions you know strict actions on the country if, uh, on the country who something uh, who does wrong to other country who lends money to governments when they need it the international monetary fund does so the world bank also give so these points are actually very important you know these uh, this is also very important because these are the questions which actually we had discussed in the uh, this of uh, there was a discussion who gives this who who manages in a, uh, you know gives loans to governments before lending they are the concerned government to show all the accounts and direct it to make changes in its uh, economic policy if some country needs amount you know money then they even there's an organization international monetary fund which is ready to help but Uh, then they are the country who is asking for money they have to show all their accounts and uh, it even directs them to make some of the changes uh, in their economic policy are these decisions a uh, uh, democratic so there are many institutions at the world level that perform some of the functions that a world government would perform you know if uh, you know if there would have been a world government it would look like this uh, the yardstick uh, but we do not know just how democratic these organizations are the yardstick here yardstick matlab how do you will you measure how democratic are these institutions organization here is whether each of these countries has free and equal say in the decisions so the one uh, method we can say whether these organizations are democratic or not is that how much say does one particular country has and are they is it free and equal for all the countries and say you know in this slide let us take the example of some of these world bodies even uh, every one of the 190 193 members are uh, you know member countries are a part of the united nations as on 2012 of the united nations uh, has one vote in the united nations general assembly so assembly is like a parliament you know we've already discussed the indian parliament so how uh, different areas constituency represented are represented by a leader so here same each in the united nations general assembly all the members of the united nation uh, you know or 93 countries they take part and every person has one vote it means regularly every yearly sessions are the president elected from among the representatives of the so here the president is ele elected from the member countries general assembly is like a parliament we already discussed where all the discussions takes place it is uh, it, in that sense the united nations would appear to be a very democratic organization but the general assembly cannot take any decisions about what action should be taken in a conflict between different Uh, countries it yes you know that's what i said that you know uh, there is an early sessions and everything to discuss uh, uh have where discussions take place but it cannot decide you know what should be in an action if there's a conflict uh between um, you know between two countries so the 15 member security council now it is important you know this thing that a 15 member security council of the united nations takes such crucial so who is the deciding factor you know who decides that what is going to happen if one country attacks another or there is a conflict between two countries are fighting then who is going to think, uh, uh, take the decision so here is a 15 member security council you know that's make the decisions uh, these councils have five permanent members out of the 12 five are permanent uh, Uh, which are united states russia united kingdom uh, france and china so these are actually the most powerful nations you know if we talk about in terms of power in the united nations 10 uh, 10 other and whereas 
the 10 other members are elected for in the January for two where either the other 10 members who are supposed to be part of the 15 members the security council they are chosen for two years and then the it turn by turn comes the real power is with the fifth five, five permanent members the permanent members especially the United States contribute to most of the money needed for the maintenance of the United Nations so is it that that they have the most power in the say power and say in the United Nations because they give the most amount of money is it linked to that each permanent member has a veto power so what is a veto power it means that the council cannot take a decision if any permanent member says no to that decision so if there are five friends okay and uh, uh five uh, five good friends okay and then each of the friends you know they have um veto power so if as a group okay if they say that tomorrow we are going to go to to a picnic to uh, that particular uh, uh, example we are going to go to uh, this uh, for example x park but one of the friends says no i don't want to go to a park so uh, they decide and they say one of the mem five friends says that i don't want to go to there so now they won't go because one of the members they said that he's not interested he that person is not interested so the plan is cancelled now they will not go to park they can decide on any other thing so that's like a veto power and the system has led more and more people and countries to protect and demand that the united nations become more democratic so this is the reason why you know more many people many countries you know say that no how how can you say that it is a democracy just because it uh, it has a general assembly no that is not how you giving power five special veto or you know uh, you giving this veto power which is so strong to only five uh, countries and you say that it's a democratic um, organization no it is not international monetary fund is one of the biggest money lenders out there you know for any country in the world um, it's 188 member states as on uh, 2012 first september do not have equal voting rights even in M uh, you know even in imf they do not the countries who are part of imf they do not have equal say the vote of each country is weighed by how much money it has contributed so if i have so we were supposed to collect 100 rupees and uh, out, uh, out of the five friends okay like for take example five friends if they are so one friend uh, friend a gives uh, uh, 80 rupees okay so now since i have given uh, 80 rupees out of the 100 needed i will have the most say i will decide all the important things and if i say no then it has to be no and while the other four uh, people they just give 5 5 rupees and making it to 100 so i am the one who's given the most money of 80 rupees out of the 100 needed so it is i whose words or who say is going to be the most important more than 50 Two percent of the voting power of the IMS is in the hands of the ten countries. Is in the hands of the only ten countries because they pay the um, largest, big, big amounts. To, you know they contribute to the IMF, like U.S., United States, Japan. We are talking about Germany, France, United Kingdom, China, Italy, Saudi Arabia, Can Canada, uh, sorry, Canada and Russia. The remaining one seventy eight members have very little say in how these all little, yeah, uh, how these uh, international organizations. Uh, can take decisions so world bank has a um, similar decision system of voting the president of the world bank has always been a citizen of the united states conventionally nominated nominated by the treasury secretary finance secretary of the uh, united states so even the same which is there for a uh, world bank even there the largest say is of the people of the countries who donate the most for example us us donates the most in uh, world bank so since uh, United Nations donate the most amount of money, its president is going to be one of the citizens or one of the people who represents uh, United States. That's how it is. Find out more about the history and various organizations of the United Nations so you can, you know, collect articles and look for in the news how uh, there were articles regarding these uh, different um uh, what uh, different organs of the United Nations as an organization compare these to the kind of democratic practices that we have been discussing in this chapter what would you say about a country where some persons have permanent positions in the ministry and have the power to stop uh you know uh, they have permanent position in the ministry and have power to stop the decisions of the entire parliament if i say that out of uh, it is not a democratic way that only out of the 10 people only five 
uh, you know, uh, people are being heard. That's not what the definition of democracy is meant. Uh, or a parliament where five percent of the members hold a majority of the votes. Would you like to call these the democratic? Most of the global institution fails to pass a simple test of democracy that we use for national governments. If, if global, uh, and that's how they as an organization fail the definition of being a democratic country. If global institutions are not democratic, are they not? Uh, are they at least becoming more democratic than before? Here is an evidence that if. Uh, uh, here too the evidence is not very encouraging you know in fact uh, nations are becoming more and more democratic than they were earlier international organizations are becoming less democratic whereas you know countries may be becoming more uh, uh, democratic but international organizations uh, such as united nations and um Example IMF or we talk about wallet they are be becoming less democratic because they are hearing or they are giving power to only a few 20 years ago there was two big powers in the world United uh, uh, States and Soviet Union the competition and conflict between those two big powers you know we talking about these two big powers it was like if you see on a map then this was uh, uh soviet union the we talked about uh, you know the it comprises the 15 republic whereas here it was america so these were the american united states so here was a two power you know conflicting in every time you know who's going to be the uh, ultimate ruler or ultimate uh, who's going to have that after the collapse of the soviet union so once you know it in, in uh, 19, uh, uh, 1991 you know uh, the soviet union collapsed so of course it there was only a one single winner that was united uh, 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 states of america which was the only superpower remaining in the world this american dominance affects the working of the international and that's how you know that if there's only one country to dominate it is going to affect the uh, working of the organizations big big organizations whether you talk about united nations whether you talk about imf or so other this is not to say that there is no urge or, mo uh, or move towards global democracy there is the urge comes from people who get more more opportunities to come in touch with one another over the last few years the people of different countries have come together with the government's support they have formed global organization against war and against domination of the world by few countries and business companies so yes there are, uh, is an urge you know people are, are, are aware and they do not want that power should be in, in only in the hands of few countries that is why they are coming up to fight against war and against domination of the world. As in the case of democracy within the nations, the initiative for democracy among nations has come up, has come from the struggles of the people. I will work for development at the World Bank, uh, the way I worked for peace at the Pentagon. So here, uh, you know, this is uh, a cartoon that uh, he he's saying that I will work for the development, uh, for development at the World Bank. But he's saying that he it will be the way the way he worked for peace at the pentagon pentagon is um united nations um this thing you know decision maker and everything you know that's the so, where it is there so he's comparing he's saying that yes i will do but he's come he's doing it for maybe you know the intentions are to do it for his country more of them so like wolfowitz was a senior official in the department of defense in the united commonly known as so okay so uh, uh pentagon is usually the department of death uh, sorry defense in the united states he was an aggressive supporter of the invasion of uh, iraq the cartoon comments on the appointment as the president of the world bank what does the cartoon tells about the relationship between the world and the bank world bank and the united states so here you can see that he is the um, in charge of uh, world bank so and he president there and he in his past records he has held the office of you know being a senior officials in the department of defense won't you is saying his uh, judgments and everything will affect more towards favoring his country and he was he was also the forward you know player in uh, the invasion in uh, iraq so that is obviously going to affect and that you cannot deny it here are some of the su suggestions to strengthen world uh, democracy. Do you uh, support these changes? Are these changes likely to have, uh, you know, uh, likely to have in, um, 
likely to happen give your reasons more nations become uh, more nations should become permanent members of the security council no it is not about increasing the number of permanent members it is about giving an equal say to everybody united nations general assembly should be like a world parliament with representatives from each country in proportion to the population of the country the representatives should elect a world government maybe yes that uh, there can be a, like it, it of course yes there should be a world parliament parliament but a representative uh, b- but if you are saying that if it's not a right to say that it should be based on the you know population because then they won't have you know for a country like india and china who have such large number of population you know uh, 7 billion or 5 billion you know they will have a at least in proportion to their uh, population they might have 12 people representing their country whereas uh, for small countries with smaller population for example uh, take uh, cuba or take any other nation which has smaller population for example you can say um, jamaica they will be affected they are such a small uh, country how, what, how much population do they they don't even have one they might have just one fourth of what we have as a total population so how is it going to be fair on that part so here what should be done that of course there should be a world parliament but uh, each country should have only one vote regardless of the population maybe or a better system can also come up but yes if it's in uh, relation with the population you know correlated then that's actually going to be more tricky individual countries should not have armies the un should make task force to bring about peace in the case of conflict between nations maybe they can have see army and everything these are very debatable topics you know because in the end of the day every country wants to protect their citizens every democratic uh, democratic country or every uh, every leader of a country want to protect and how are you going to pr- protect your people from other country okay of course we agree social rights and everything health education and everything that is there how that's the four um, forefront uh, factors that uh, affects you know whether you talk about hd and that means if you are good on the hr that means you are actually taking care of the people of your country but how do we take care of our people from different countries we do not know the intent of different companies right so this whole thing you know having that no country should have army it has to be a collaboration and a cooperation at such a large level that's not even you know uh, maybe happen in next 100 or 1000 years also that's actually very because every country has their own insecurities and we cannot uh, no country other country can justify it for the other country there why they are insecure and etc but yes if there is a will there is a way if they want if we all want as citizens of the earth then i think it can be done a uh, a united nations president should be elected directly by all the people of the world it is actually even if we do not uh, you know say that it's not uh, this thing it's not um, if we elect the leaders of our country and then they elect then uh, you know uh, the president then that is also fine after all it is being el- elected by the people who who we are electing it's indirect elections you know it's actually called indirect uh, elections for example in the uh, rajya sabha you know that is also there rajya sabha elections are uh, the um uh this thing of parliament you know rajya sabha that is also uh, indirect elections where we do not uh, ourselves choose the people of uh, for people for rajya sabha but yeah it's called uh, indirect elections that can also be uh, done so now we are talking about about democracy uh, promotion take a cl- close look at these two of the uh, cartoons on the on this and on the next page these cartoon is a fundamental questions related to global democracy recently many powerful countries in the world particularly the united nations of uh, united states of america have taken place on the task of democracy promotion in the rest of the world they say that propagating the value of democracy is not enough they say that it is not only enough to propagate the values existing democracy should directly intervene in uh, countries that are non democratic 
ability to establish a democracy there. In such cases, powerful countries have launched armed attack on non-democratic ones. So they say that we can do it only by attacking because we are propagating and nothing is happening. So that can now only be done by attack. Do you think that? No. Uh, you know, communication is a great skill. You talk out to people, the country, who, uh, the leaders of the particular country that you want or as a whole, as a globe, you glo global democracy we want. This is about Sushmita was talking about that how you know right or correct or morally correct or democratically correct principle is it to you know, you know for a power, more powerful nation to dictate or uh, govern or control you know like before the colonial uh, in the colonial rule to tell them their country that it is good or bad for you let us see what happened in iraq iraq is in uh, western asia uh, is in western asia it became independent from british rule so even iraq was ruled by uh, british uh, uh, you know britishers in uh, 1932 three decades later there was a series of coups by military officers since 1968 it was ruled by arab socialists so they were Coops and they were Arab socialist Ba'ath party, uh, you know, which means rena uh, renaissance, matlab, new beginning. Saddam Hussein, al, uh, you know, uh, a leading Ba'ath party, Ba'ath party leader played a key role in the 1968 coup that brought party to the power. This government uh, abolished traditional Islamic uh, laws and gave women the rights to vote and several freedoms not granted in other Western uh, countries. After becoming president of Iraq, 1990, uh, Saddam uh, ran a, a dictator. So there was now a dictatorial government and suppressed any dissent or opposition to the uh, to his rule he was known to have got a number of political opponents kill and persons he even killed people or people from ethnic uh, mi minorities the u.s and its allies like britain alleged that iraq possessed secret nuclear weapons and the, uh, and other new uh, other weapons of mass destructions which posed a big threat to the world so they say that oh this country you know it has some weapons and everything which poses a threat to world peace but when the united nations team went to iraq to search for such weapons it did not find any you know even when the united nations team went there they did not find still the u.s and its allies like britain who was actually uh, the uh, colonist before there a colonist of um uh, Iraq. He said that they invaded Iraq and occupied it and removed Saddam Hussein from power in 2003. The US installed its interim government. They themselves said that this is going to be a, the government uh, of its preference. You know, the war against Iraq was not author authorized by the UN Security Council. Kofi and then the, uh, the then you know uh, Security Council uh, Security General said that uh, the war on Iraq was illegal. He said that whatever that war was, it was illegal so here we are talking about see here we are saying this is united nations uh sorry this is sorry i'm sorry this is united states the, you can see the flag here this is a cactus which is actually a statue of liberty you know it talks about this this is a book you know it's a cactus cactus has thorns okay so and here is iraq so can you give anybody if you want to be friends with anybody, do you think it is right to give cactus? No, you're supposed to give flowers. So that's the question here. So we are here. Uh, the example of Iraq, you know, it has it raises many questions. You know, is it right to promote democracy? Should the democratic country wage a war, you know, in other countries? It is, is it right or external help? In a, in a, there's a case of external help, or does it only work that the paper mission is actively engaged in struggle to make the societies democratic? Is it that even if external inventions lead in our country, would it last long? No, it is. You know, they are going to come and do something, and then after they leave, you know, because that's what happened in uh, afghanistan also finally it is the use of external force you know that's taking place a gift is it really a spirit of democracy that are the questions that we need to